Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and welcome back to the second part of our video about how to add a Falcon sail to one of our skin-on-frame kayaks. Now, before we get into this, I just want to mention, if you noticed a dramatic shift in the lighting, that's because our main studio light just burned out. And when I say burned out, I mean literally an electrical fire. So it's going to take a little while to get that fixed. So for this video, I pulled out an F 1.2 prime lens, threw it on the camera. We're going to crank up the ISO and I'm going to film this basically in the dark. But from your perspective, hopefully all you're going to notice is that the depth of field is a little bit shallow. So anyways, in the first part of this video, I talked about all the things you're going to want to think about before you rig the boat for sail, including adding perimeter lines and also potentially a rudder. And then I showed you where to put all the different fittings for the sailing system. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to put on the Falcon sail itself. But keep in mind, even though these videos are focusing specifically on the Falcon sailing system, most of these same instructions are going to be compatible with any other type of kayak sail. All right, so first thing I'm going to do here is put the whole kayak onto the floor. And the reason I'm doing this is because when we're tying the sail stays, the mast is going to be standing up vertical and you're going to need the vertical height to do that. Next thing I'm going to do is level the kayak. And if you have the bungee cord back deck modification, this is really easy. Just have to grab yourself a level and stick it across underneath the bungee cords. Also, if all you have is a torpedo level, you can do this just with a regular piece of wood and then you could set the torpedo level on top of it. And then you can come in from the sides either with foam blocks or with towels and just kind of push them underneath the kayak until it's stable and the bubble is right in the middle of the lines. So next up, you want to grab the base section of the mast only and making sure that this little screw right here is pointing forward, you're going to want to slide this onto the base plate. Now, if it's not sliding on there, that's probably because this part down here is not indexed into the plate. So notice, see how that can go like this? You want that to turn until it locks in so this is flat. And then you're going to put it on here and then you're going to slide it forward. And for our purposes right now, you can just twist this screw by hand and you want that to index into this hole which is toward the front of the boat. Now, if at this point you've got this on here and you notice that this micro clam cleat right here is on the front of the mast, that means this whole assembly is backwards and possibly your base plate is backwards as well and you're going to need to switch it around. So go ahead and just tighten that down a little bit right there. If you want to, you can use an Allen wrench on it. So next you want to locate this piece right here. And the nice thing about this is this comes fully rigged. So We've got these four lines coming off the back side that has the flat part on it, and those are for the stays. And then you want this one here, which is going to be a much longer cord heading towards the front of the kayak. And then you can just slide this over the mast joint right here. And then next you're going to grab the top section of the mast and you're going to slide it down over this. And we're not going to worry about the sail for right now. So the next thing I like to do is run a brace out from the mast so it'll hold itself perfectly vertical down the center line of the kayak and then leaning just a little bit backwards. And the reason we're doing that is because it's a lot easier to set these stays accurately if the mast isn't flopping from side to side. So you can see here on one end I've got a relatively stiff piece of wood clamped onto a sawhorse and then the other end is clamped up here on the mast. So once you've got this stabilized, you want to grab a torpedo level and just set it along the side of your mast. So right now you're looking straight down the center line of the kayak and then you just want to bump this stabilizer back and forth until the bubble on your torpedo level is right in the middle and don't forget to check the level on your kayak as well. Also, just a quick tip, while you're doing this, the more towels or things you have stuffed around your kayak so it can't move from side to side, the less likely that this is going to get wonky while you're working on it. Now, in addition to this being level straight up and down along the center line, we also want it to be tilting back just slightly. And just to give you an idea of how much this is leaning, I've got my torpedo level on here. I'm going to pull the bottom out until the bubble is level. And it looks like there's about a quarter inch of space right here at the bottom of the torpedo level to the mast. And another way to think of that is you want these side stays that we're about to tie to drop straight down from the ring to these attachment points. 
Next, I'm going to grab the longer uphaul line off the front of the ring, and I'm going to thread it through the fair lead that we screwed down to the deck at the front of the boat. And I'm just doing this right now to get it out of my way while I'm working on these other lines. Next, you want to locate the bag of these little clips right here. And the way these work is you pull on this little ring, and they open up, and you're going to put these around all four of the pad eyes, just like that. So to tie the stays on, we're going to be doing what's called a trucker's hitch. You've got a loop tied in the line right here, and this is going to come pre-tied for you. And then you're going to take the end of the line, you're going to bring it down through that fitting, and then back up through the loop right here. And at first, you're not going to be able to pull this tight, because obviously you'll just pull the whole thing over towards you. But you're going to want to give it a little bit of tension and then squeeze it right here and then feed the tail around in a half hitch. And initially you just want to do one half hitch because you're going to want to do this on one side and then do it on the other side and then check with your torpedo level to make sure that the mast is still straight up and down. And then you're just going to want to slowly start tightening these back and forth until they're nice and tight. And each time you go back and forth to tighten this up, you want to pull down and then pinch it like that. That way you're not going to lose the tension while you're putting your half hitches back in. And then once everything's nice and tight, now you can tie off more half hitches. And the minimum number of half hitches you want to do here is four. And I usually just do it until I run out of string, unless for some reason on that particular kayak I just have a million half hitches. And in that case, I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. So. So next thing we're going to do is tie on the back stays, but before we do that, we want to tip the mast back even a little bit further. And the reason for that is, once you get out sailing, these lines are going to have a tremendous amount of tension on them, which means the knots are going to tighten up and the lines are going to stretch a little bit. So if you tie your back stays on with the mast perfectly vertical, within a very short amount of time, the mast is actually going to be tilting pretty far forward, which isn't going to give you the best sail trim. So what I like to do is tilt the mast backwards until this line is just falling naturally down about two inches behind this line right here, or about three inches behind the center of the mast base. And that may or may not be perfect for you, just depending on how tight you tighten your lines, but that'll give you a good starting point at least. And as far as the tie-off for the back stays, that's going to be exactly the same as what you did for the front stays. And then after you've taken this out and sailed it a couple times, all of these lines are going to loosen up and they're going to need to get readjusted. But when you go to readjust them, you don't want to do it the way that we just did it because they're just going to loosen up again and again and it's going to be frustrating. Instead, when you go to readjust your lines after they've had some sail tension on them, what you want to do is unclip the clip and then untie this down to the first half hitch and then you can slip the cord just a little bit through that half hitch like that and then tie it off again. And then you can use the cam action of the clip to give the sail stay a little bit more tension than you would have been able to otherwise. So next thing we're going to do is rig the uphaul line coming down off the front of the mast. And if you're doing this on the ridge deck kayak that has this pad eye for a fair lead, you want to run this line through so it's going towards the side of the kayak of your non-dominant hand. And the reason for that is, if you're pulling up the sail with your non-dominant hand, that leaves your dominant hand free to be able to operate the sail tie down and also to deploy and to catch the sail. And the only exception to this would be if you're building a set of kayaks to set up as a catamaran, and in that case, you always want the uphaul going towards the side of the boat that is going to be towards the center of the catamaran. And then finally, if you're doing this on a flat decked version, you're just going to have a little pulley tied on right here. And when you do that, you want to do it in a real specific way. One, you want to make sure that it's not hanging on a carabiner or something because you don't want some big loose thing up here jangling around or potentially tangling things. Just make sure that you lash it on nice and close. And also, you want to lash it on on the side of the knot of your dominant hand. And the reason for that is, if you do that, and then you put the line through it and you tighten it down, that's going to pull the loop over like this. And that's going to be beneficial for you because that's going to help your spare paddle be able to come in and out from underneath this side. Whereas if you do it the other way, 
it's going to actually trap your spare paddle a little bit if you have a full-size spare Greenland paddle on deck. So anyways, just keep that in mind. Now for the routing on this, you want to come back from the fair lead or the pulley on the side of your non-dominant hand, unless you're making a catamaran, and you're going to come behind both of the stays, but above the perimeter line. And then you're going to come down to this corner where we've got the deck bungee and the traveler ring. And we're going to sneak the uphaul line through this same pad eye right here. And there's not a lot of room in here, but as long as this line isn't bigger than five millimeters and this bungee isn't bigger than five sixteenths, there should be enough room for this to slide freely. And then from there, we're going to come back. We're going to go under these deck lines right here and into the uphaul cleat. And you want to pull this as hard as you can and set it into that cleat. And then just take a second and look at the mast and make sure you like how it's sitting. Make sure it's sitting straight up and down and it's leaning a little bit backwards. And if you need to, you can make some adjustments. And then after that, you want to release the cleat and fold the mast down to the deck. And then for safety reasons, we always want to cut these tails as short as we can and still be able to easily operate the sail. So for this style of cleat right here with the fair lead, I usually come out 12 inches further, cut it, burn the end with a lighter, and then when I'm actually out sailing, I will tie a little bowlin into the end of this. It's just a little loop knot that you can easily tie and untie. You can look up how to do it on the internet. And that does two things. It gives me something that I can grab onto really easily in an emergency, and also it makes sure that this line isn't going to accidentally slip forward through the fair lead. Now, if you're going to go with an open style cleat, or you think you might want to experiment with an open style cleat, I would recommend cutting this a little bit longer, say something like 18 inches, because in that case, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tie it around this deck line right here. You can use that same bowline knot. And the reason we're doing that is because with an open cleat right here, when this is out of the cleat, basically there's nothing to stop this line from coming loose and then you wouldn't be able to grab it. And so in that case, when you're going to raise the sail, you're just going to grab the loop right here and pull it back and then set the line down into the open cleat right there. All right, so next thing we're going to do is put the boom on. And to do that, we're going to have to temporarily remove this ring with all the stays attached to it. So just go ahead and separate the mast. And then you can just temporarily unclip all these clips down here. You can pull off the ring. And then you want to grab the boom and you want to make sure before you slide this on here, the pad eyes on the top and also the cleat at the end are facing upwards. So once you've done that, you can just go ahead and slide the boom over the mast. And there's going to be a little stopper ring down here, and this may or may not be in the right place, but it's pretty easy to adjust, and we'll do that later. And then once you've done that, you want to grab this ring with all the stays on it, slide it back over, and then you can get the top of the mast, and you can slide that back on as well. And then you're just going to go ahead and re-rig this really quick, exactly like you just had it. Next, you want to grab the sail and slide it down over the top part of the mast. And then you can go ahead and raise the sail all the way up. And then coming down to the bottom of the front of the sail, if this sleeve isn't already unbuttoned, just take a moment to unbutton it. And then you're going to wrap it behind the stays and around the front of the mast. And then you're going to button it back up. And then coming down to the boom attachment, you can see the boom is held up by this stop collar right here. And if this is already in the right spot, no worries. You can just tighten up these Allen screws. But if it's a little bit lower, you're going to want to loosen it up, slide it up the mast, and then retighten it. So the boom is sitting about like this. And then next, you want to grab this bungee that's coming down off the tack of the sail and slide it down through the hole in the top of the boom. And you're going to bring that down through this clam cleat that's located on the bottom of the back of the mast and then give it a little tension. Next, we're going to come out to the other end of the boom. You're going to grab this little rope that's tied onto the clue of the sail. I'm going to slide it through the fair lead. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. 
And then you always want to tie a little knot in the end of this just so it can't slip back through the fair lead. I usually push it down through this hole right here. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that or not. That's just what I do. So go ahead and tie that off like that. And then if you need to, you can adjust it or you can just keep it nice and tight. Next up, you want to grab another piece of that eighth inch black Dacron cord, and we're going to tie this around the boom for the sheet. So the location for this is the pad eye that is closest to the outward end of the boom. So I'm just going to come behind this right here, and I'm going to tie this on with a bowlin right now, but if I was absolutely certain that this cord was the right length and I was never going to change it, I would probably tie a scaffold knot and tighten it down because it would be a little bit cleaner. So. Anytime you're tying just a single bowline like this, make sure you leave yourself enough tail sticking out of the knot because bowlins can work themselves a little bit and you definitely don't want the sheet to come off while you're sailing. So anyways, from there, I'm gonna come straight down and then I'm gonna go through that ring on the bungee traveler right here. And then I'm gonna come back underneath these two deck lines and into the cleat right here. And then to determine the length of your sheet line, you want to grab the boom and push the sail as far forward as you possibly can. You want to push it out to about 90 degrees. And I'm doing this on the same side right now, but when you're doing this, you want to do this on the opposite side that you have it cleated off on. And then find some way to hold it in place right here. And then just like we did on the other side, you can stretch this out. And if you're using a closed cleat and you know you're going to stay with a closed cleat, you can cut this off at about 12 inches, burn the end, and then tie a little loop in it. But if you're going with an open cleat or you want the option to go with open cleats in the future, I would cut this at about 18 inches. And if you're using an open cleat, make sure you tie it back to this deck line right here so it doesn't accidentally disappear on you. So just to recap, we've got the uphaul line. We've got the side stays, we've got the back stays, and then out here is the sheet. And there's one more line we want to talk about, and that is the vang. Now, what a vang is, it's a line that goes from a little ways out on the boom down at a diagonal to the base of the mast, and its job is to keep the boom from lifting up in a gust of wind. And the reason that's important is because if the boom can lift up, it's going to spoil the shape of the sail, and you're going to lose power. And when you're running downwind, a vang can really help to calm down the tendency for a sail to suddenly violently jibe. So it seems like a vang would be a good idea, but the issue with it on a kayak sail is sometimes you want the sail to lift up a little bit because it acts as a safety valve to spill a little bit of wind in a gust. And so even though in that situation, you're not gaining the full power of the sail, you're also a lot less likely to get pushed over into the water. So my recommendation would be that you sail for a little while without the vang. And then once you start to get more confident, and especially when you're confident that you're going to be able to perform a self rescue or roll with the sail up, then I would add the vang and start playing with that. And as far as the tie off for this, it's exactly the same as you did with the sheet. You're just gonna tie it around the boom right here. And then we're gonna come down at a diagonal. And I'm not gonna zoom in on the detail down here because that's a little bit proprietary, but the way that Patrick runs this down here is actually pretty clever. And then once you go through the base of the mast, you can come backwards. And just like we did on the uphaul line, you wanna go over the perimeter line right here. And then if you're building a ridged deck version of one of my modern kayaks, you've got two different choices. You can either go underneath the bungee traveler loop and straight back, or you can mirror what we did on the opposite side with the uphaul line and come through this pad eye out here. Now, if you're building the flat deck version of one of my modern kayaks, you're going to want to come through the pad eye every single time. And then from there, we're just going to come back underneath these deck lines. And as far as the cleating location for this line, to be perfectly honest, I have not spent enough time with this system yet to decide exactly where I want to cleat this off. But I did mention earlier that an alternative to using this little micro pad eye to tie down this bungee here is to pin down the other end of it underneath another micro clam cleat. 
So anyways, once my back heals and I can clock some more hours with this system, if it turns out there's a specific location where the van cleat works better, I'll make sure that I come back and put that in the video description. All right, so that's how I set up a Falcon sail on one of our own skin on frame kayaks. I also wanna mention that we are still working on our own DIY sail system that you can build at home, but that's on pause right now until my back injury heals and I can continue testing the system. So when we do release that, it will be in the form of a mini course, just like our other skin on frame add-ons. So make sure you check the website for that. One more thing I wanna mention is that Falcon sails are compatible with our skin on frame kayak catamaran system, which is already included in the skin on frame kayak building course. Although there are a few unique rigging details for that setup. So if you're gonna use these sails with our kayak catamaran, send me an email and I can give you some additional direction on the rigging. So even though this was just an installation video, I wanna finish up here with a quick safety reminder. Kayak sailing is incredibly fun and it can be really useful on longer trips, but it also carries significantly higher risks of ending up in the water, which means that you need to be absolutely certain that you have a rescue strategy that is matched to the conditions you're gonna be paddling in. So for example, if the water's warm and you're not planning on sailing further than 50 feet from shore, I think just swimming the boat to shore and dumping it out is a perfectly reasonable rescue strategy. On the other hand, if you're traveling with a group of people in open water, everyone needs to be close together with predetermined communication and rescue strategies and training in how to efficiently rescue skin on frame boats. And then finally, if you're out solo doing cold open water crossings, you need at a minimum a dry suit, float bags, a sea sock, a paddle float, and preferably the ability to roll your kayak even with the sail still up. Remember that whatever rescue strategy you're gonna be relying on, it is critical that you practice it in the same wind and wave and water temperature conditions that you plan to paddle in with the same gear load and preferably the same level of fatigue that you might experience on a typical paddle. By practicing this way, not only are you gonna get more experience with your rescues, but you're also gonna identify weaknesses in the system so you can correct them before you end up in a real life rescue scenario. And I am right on the verge here of diving down a whole separate rapid hole of kayaking safety advice that would probably be better for a separate video. So why don't we just finish this up here? And if you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, click that notification bell to find out when we release new videos. You can find us on our website at capefalconkayaks.com where we've got a whole bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can also find us on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post a daily build blog of everything we're working on in the shop. Or if you're not on Instagram, we put that same stuff up on Facebook. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram or the Facebook because there is just so much more cool stuff there than ever shows up here on the YouTube channel. And also it's gonna show up months and months earlier than when we release a YouTube video. All right, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Be safe on the water and have fun building your skin boat.